You've been very poorly. I had a stroke. We talk about something else. All right. I know. Top ten films of the year. Okay. Who goes first? You can go first. Right. Um. Three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri, at number ten. Why did you put up these billboards? My daughter Angela was murdered seven months ago. It seems to me the police department is too busy torturing black folks to solve actual crime. What the hell is this? What I found fascinating about this one is this is one of the films where they made a half-hearted attempt to assassinate it. Like, um, what was that Catherine Bigelow film a few years ago? Oh, Zero the, Dark Thirty. Right. They, well, they didn't. They didn't quite. Not in the same way. It wasn't as political. This is more about snowflakes not understanding how a film works. They did make one good point about. So let's go. What was good first? Before we get onto that. Well, uh, that's Sam Rockwell. It's the acting. The acting is brilliant. Sam Rockwell in particular, where he's brilliantly written, a troublesome, three-dimensional character. Um, he's a racist. He's prone to violence, unreasonable violence, and yet he's sympathetic and human at the same time. And the black character, if you have that sort of, the argument was if you have that sort of character, a three-dimensional racist, why isn't the black character that he's abused so sort of, you know, underwritten? But the story, was... this, the story's not really about that. I've got, for mm. my number 10, I, Tonya. That and, very nearly made my top 10. And the reason that's on my top 10 is either that or The Last Jedi. And I didn't really want to put The Last Jedi on because it makes me sound like a fucking nerd. <laughs> and so I put I, Tonya on probably because I liked its Godfather-esque... Um, Starting when it's made, which it's made. Yes. Yeah, I liked, and I liked the fact that the second half of films usually get more serious, while I, Tonya, it got more funny. America, they want someone to love, but they want someone to hate. I mean, come on, what kind of friggin' person bashes in their friend's knee? Who would do that to a friend? I think that deserves praise, as does Alice and Jenny and... Margaret Robbie. Yeah, yeah, Mar Margot Robbie, I think it is. Well, I'm in England. Yeah. So what's your number nine then? Number nine is, well, you love Ladybird. What I'd really like is to be on Math Olympiad. But math isn't something you're terribly strong in. That we know of yet. Well, um, I, I, I did ask a, a, an artistic uh, woman from this demograph, um, who watched it and she said it meant absolutely nothing to her. It went, OVM. <laughs> right. And if it doesn't actually hit the actual demograph, then um, I, what's the point? I couldn't give a monkey's about the demograph. All I care about is whether I liked it or not. I liked the first scene and then afterwards it was just, okay. it's all right. It, yeah. would never, it would never go on my top ten. That's no, no, laughable. No. You quite liked it, but it weren't anything special. I, right. I liked it. I kept on comparing it to Boyhood. And it, it was really interesting. Shout out some of the problems with Boyhood well, the, main, the main fact being the central character is boring as fuck and you compare the, him to Sir Ronan and she's a charismatic performer interesting and funny and I love the relationship with the mum I thought that was good and uh, each individual scene didn't meander on for bloody ever talking about nothing like Boyhood did every individual scene was a decent scene my number nine is War for the Planet mm. of the Apes <laughs> A film that might have got higher up on my list had it not been for a slightly corny ending. Before then, it was pretty much excellent, and the first half I think was uh, top notch. Really. We're talking about the ending. We're doing no non spoilers. We're doing non spoilers. Okay, so any spoilers that we give, we'll edit out. Right. So you can say I didn't like the ending. That's not really a spoiler. No, no, no. Um, yeah, I like that film as well. Um, I thought the first half was superb of the film when they were they're wandering about the waste. That sort of it felt epic. Second half is still a really good film. Um, it's still a good film, but it, it almost as if it was a different genre. 
and I didn't enjoy that as much. But again, there was no particular problems with the film. It was Schindler's List with it, primates. It was a. Con it was a. Con it was Schindler's List with primates. Uh, a bit less harrowing. About the same. About the same. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, no, it's probably worse in, in uh, War for the Planet Apes because in Schindler's List, all the main characters that we know in Schindler's List, they all make it to the end. While in War for the Planet Apes, not everybody makes it. So. Yeah, it didn't quite have the same impact. Oh, I've watched, watch no, I watched it lots of times. But yeah, um, I think it. it's, I don't know, I, I just really enjoy it. So your number no, eight? No, my number eight is uh, The Leveling. So what's your number seven? <laughs> Uh, uh, you prejudiced against on. British film, you are. Yeah, I am. I think I think maybe we should grow up and. Uh, it's got nothing to no, do I, with it. It's just, do. it's just you know, can we can we make a film that people want to see? Either they're really really silly comedies like uh, Cockneys versus Zombies or whatever, which is fine. Who's number or they're eight? the Leveling. Whose number eight is this? Is it yours or is it mine? Yeah, no, I just, I just, I just, I shut the fuck up. It's just everything has to be so fucking dour these days. Um, yeah, it is a dour film. The subject matter is is dour. It's about bereavement, but it's so sharply acted. But it's not just kitchen sink. It's what was interesting is it was if you walked in this film halfway through and got into specific scenes, you could be forgiven thinking that this is some sort of folk horror, even though there's no horror in it. But it's done in a strange, abstract way at times that is unsettling. And I'd like to see her do a horror movie, um, the director, which her name is Hope Dixon Leach. And she's... Excuse me. Oh. Why Chris is a Cunt by John Wheeler. Ginger eyebrows linger, furrow and collapse. A whining oath surrounded by potential. He shits, but not by much. His taste in film festers languidly. An apple shut out next to an abortion clinic in a filthy alley somewhere in Kent. Will he ever awaken to see the sun? grass sways gently. I know quite rightfully say to himself, I am a cunt. 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 your number eight then? Uh, my number eight is Dunkirk. It would have been better uh, as a as a 15 or an R rated film but uh, you know the the uh, the, pe the pacing the pex the pacing is excellent. It is a problem because people did, people die. Yeah I know but it's all about tension rather than um, Blood and guts and gore, you know, um, Private Ryan style. No, no, but in war people die. I know. Uh, this was a shrewd move on the studio because he just wanted more, more and more people to watch it. I think he wants to. I think he wants to be Stanley Kubrick, but still <laughs> keep a PG rating. Yeah, and no, I, that's problematic, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be as downfall. It year. is. It is problematic. I, no, I, I think know. I think you're right. That's a general problem with Nolan. It didn't bother me so much in Dunkirk because I thought the lack of violence was. Was fine. It was all about tension. I just felt studio mm -hmm. interference there. That's all. So, your number seven. My number seven. Um, the Love Witch. Yeah, yeah no, I have no problem with the Love Witch. Yeah, I, I think that's. First of all, the director Annabella wrote, directed, painted all the sets and did all the costume. So much she did so much slow that the the crew actually hated her for it. Um, but it's one of the most beautiful looking films in recent years and you pointed something out that i hadn't noticed the first time you found it really funny so that's an extra string to the bow. i think the i think the love which is good mm -hmm. um i think it's a solid uh, example of sort of exploitation stuff from the she hates late, late 60s. <laughs> well the director hates that so why did she fucking make one because she wanted um she wanted um to get that sort of 
Rock Hudson sort of vibe. And she was quite surprised that people... But she ended up with Russ Mayer. All I know is these goddamn ropes are cutting the hell out of my wrist and I want out now! Growl, Vassal. She said, I've never seen Russ Mayer... With the boobs as well. It's yeah. Russ Mayer with boobs. Yeah. And uh, what, well, she doesn't like these sort of films, but she made one. Yeah, well, I mean, you could probably have a good argument with her if you ever made it. That was going back and forth on social media about, about that. Oh, so right, if it's on social media, there's obviously... A, it's, it's a cretinous conversation, then. If it's on social media, <laughs> it's, it's, it's then it's dumb. Yeah, it, it is, is dumb. We have, to, we have to move on. Right, okay, <laughs> my number seven. It was either this or The Last Jedi, which I thought was really good. Um, but I thought this was better because it made me cry, and that's Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Now, whatever you do, don't push this button. Because that will set off the bomb. I like James Gunn. I like the fact that he wrote it on his own. And I didn't like it so much the first time I saw it because of um, something that happens at the end. Mm. Um, the second time I watched it, I got it a bit more and I accepted it and I loved it. And it's probably better than the first one. So. Yeah. And the bit that happens at the end, no, I didn't like that as much. So who knows, if I saw it again, maybe I'd have a different opinion. I don't really have anything very interesting to say about So what's your number six then? Is it six? Is it? Right, he heard Lost City of Z. Z? If we may find a city where one was considered impossible to exist, it may well write a whole new chapter in human history. It sounds like a really, really rubbish Land of the Zombies bit. Well, you would expect Troy McClure to... Was it Doug McClure? Doug and it's yeah, yeah. it's not. It's for fans of Lawrence of Arabia, mm. fans of the old school David Lean. It's like a film. We were talking about this. It was like a studio movie made in the in the seventies. It, it does feel like they don't make films like this anymore, do they? Like, Which is a shame. Yeah, especially when they're that good. My number six is the death of Stalin. <laughs> Uh, for those who've seen in the thick of it, uh, will know what's his name? Armando Iannucci. Iannucci. That guy. I've had a stroke. I think if there's an Oscar for best ensemble film, I think mm, Death mm, of Stalin. Mm. Well, SAG isn't is it the Screen Actors Guild. They give a best ensemble. Yeah, it doesn't matter. On oh, another interesting thing about this film, Stalin died of a massive stroke. We've just had a couple of small ones. So for you, it's a bit more like. Death of a Thousand Cuts, rather than one sort of oh, just gone quickly. Yeah. Someone was mentioning um, that there's a very narrow line comedy, a, a ha absolute horror, and this does it beautifully. That these are ordinary, kind of likable doofuses that you could meet at the pub, and these these idiots are having people murdered left, right, and centre. I, I would say it's the most successful political commentary since maybe Dr. Strangelove. You still want to have a drink with these guys, but you'd be scared they'd kill you. No, I know I don't. Well, I do. No, I, I think they're psychopaths. Yeah, no, no, no. All right, anyway, what's your next one? Uh, yes. Um, personal shopper. Kira? I'm just going to drop these bags for you, okay? Hey. I liked it because I'm a huge fan of horror, and this isn't really a horror film. And yet, although I love good quality horror, I haven't been disturbed by a horror film in decades, and this had a couple of scenes that generally made me uncomfortable, and I, I've got to give it for that. And also, at times, it's it's got a directorial style that reminds me a bit of Polanski at times, and it's just classy. And oh, who knew that Kristen Stewart could act? <sighs> Finished. Yeah, move on to something boring, dull. My number five, four is Mother. <laughs> Aronofsky making uh, basically an art film, and I like art films, so uh, Mother. Could and me. you could, and Jennifer, you know, Jennifer Lawrence's boobs. Mm -hmm. no, that good. automatically gets on there because that's, of that. that's like, you see, stars immediately. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Not the bit where she's getting attacked at the end. No, no. But but I think the see-through thing she wore at the beginning was really. It's funny hard. that I was thinking about Imperial Falls when I started watching that. That uh, there's nude photographs of her on the internet, okay. which show far more. Apparently so. 
and yet that was way sexier. No, it, it, it wasn't. The second half, it's like he fucked uh, Terry Gilliam and this is the child. Mm. I'm, I'm thinking about the film, I really should have put it at number 10, maybe. So, yeah, mm. your number four. My number four. Dunkirk. Uh, my oh. number three. I. Is Logan, and specifically the black and white edition. I hurt myself today to see if I still feel I focus on the pain. The black and white version pushes over the edge into the last picture show territory where it just looks it just it just looks the part. It almost changed the genre of the film watching it. Because um, I don't know if you agree with me, but um, when I saw it the first time in colour, it was like a western. And then I saw it in black and white, and I was thinking it is a mixture of noir, obviously, but also it felt almost avant-garde. Felt... The colour version looked like a lower-budget superhero film that was an R. Right. And the black and white version made it look like an old western. Very good. Your number three? Um, the Death of Stalin. <laughs> My number two mm -hmm. is Three Billboards. <laughs> Oh, uh, two, number two. My number two is Blade Runner 2049. Every civilization was built off the back of a disposable workforce. It looks beautiful. It's a decent story, even though some people have criticised the story. They managed to get a decent performance out of Harrison Ford. One of the most atmospheric films you'll ever see. What was shocking about Blade Runner is that they didn't embarrass the original. Blade Runner's job is to hunt down replicants. Manufactured humans you can't tell from the real thing. They did the impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, for a lot of people, Blade Runner 24-9 is better because yeah. it actually has an investigation in it. Yeah, as I said, Blade Runner, I asked the question, post question, is that the most flawed classic of all time? Certainly up there. So my number one is, of course, Blade Runner. Your number one. It's Logan. Now, little man, you need to sleep, don't you? Because you're yeah. not very well. <laughs> so you go to sleep, turn the cameras off first, <laughs> and then let's just hope you wake up. <laughs> right, I want you to get your bags and go home. <laughs>